Do you mind telling me what your role in this movie is? I'm a filmmaker, and I submitted my first film in the Real to Real Film Festival nine years ago, and I won Best Documentary. And hopefully I can do the same thing this year. What is your documentary called? My second documentary is called The Illusion of Money. Okay, and what's that about? It is about how money has evolved or devolved, if you will, to become nothing more than an entry on computers. And it's something that is loaned to the governments of the world at interest with no production costs whatsoever. So in that sense, it's an illusion. We're all working for an illusion. So how did this idea of the illusion of money spark? Well, this being the second documentary um, in the New World Order film series um, basically looks at secret societies which have always been around. And as soon as you say secret societies or even the dreaded word conspiracy, people think that you're some kind of tinfoil hat wearing guy who doesn't believe anything that they're told in school. Well, as a double major in history, I one day about 15 years ago was just researching um, an interpretation of Matthew 24 and went online for an explanation and I went down the rabbit hole and I looked at all, all kinds of subjects including, may, may I even say, the subject of 9-11 and I could not disprove the alternative version of 9-11 and if you come on out to the illusion of money um, this coming week you'll discover 10 trillion reasons why 9-11 was an inside job. Okay. And just on the topic of money, does, it, does your documentary touch on the idea of Caesars and Caesars' money and taxes? It doesn't discuss the spiritual nature of money as much as it does uh, talk about the historical and mechanical effects of money. Um, there are more verses in the Bible about money than there are about salvation because salvation is simple, but the effects of money are rather complicated. So I could have discussed for two hours the whole spiritual effects of money, but we need a broader historical survey. Let's get the facts in first as a double major in history and a former history teacher, and then uh, extrapolate based on that to the spiritual effects of money. So this is your second documentary. That's right. How did you go about making this? I said somebody out there has to discuss, quote unquote, conspiracy theory. I hate that loaded term from a Christian perspective and separate fact from fiction. And it's been a blast. Um, the past nine years have seen people come to Christ because of the videos that I produce on YouTube for free. And 15 million views later, um, I've got about a 94% thumbs up rating, so I must be doing something right. That's really good. Yes. How does it feel to know that you've helped so many people come to Jesus? It is absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I'm talking about a woman from Iran accepting Christ because of the explanations that I give. Um, a Jew from New York accepting that Christ is actually, you know, the fulfillment of the law, which is what he is. And so many Christians, they go to church and they're satisfied with the mediocrity in terms of their faith, but they don't really have an explanation for evil. And what I do with my films is I get really down and dirty into, into some very nasty topics, but in spite of all the evil that I can show people, I give them real hope with this. Evil is only fulfilling Bible prophecy. So all the denominations of evil are still only fulfilling God's plan. And that is what keeps me going. I mean, my faith is a lifesaver. It's not a sucker that you know, gives me a temporary sugar high and so I can keep on going from one sugar high to the next. It, it shelters me from the storm in this world. So you look a lot about, like you're looking at facts. Mm -hmm. And you say you're a double major in history. Mm -hmm. How do facts bringing the Bible and history connect? Uh, okay. 
there are so many verses in the Bible which describe historical forces and the human condition, and not just physically but spiritually. For example, there are three verses in Psalm 64 which I've repeatedly wept over because they're so true. I mean, I keep discovering that they're absolutely verified dozens of times. For example, three verses, Psalm 64. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of evildoers. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see it? They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning. So if you come on out to see the illusion of money this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're going to witness somebody like, say, George Soros, who claims to be a Jew, I'm not making any value judgments, and who admits to a 60-minute film crew 12, 22 years ago that at age 14 he pretended to be a good Christian and he sold out his fellow Jews to the Nazis for money. And 70 years later, he has no regrets, regrets because he says that if I didn't do it, somebody else wouldn't, would have done it. And it's just like the markets, really. I mean, that is psychopathy right there. There are a lot of highly successful, highly powerful psychopaths out there. And Jesus said, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. You must be as wise as serpents and gentle as doves. So I'm giving you the background story. I'm giving you the, the intelligence from the field. So does your documentary touch on how we can be wise? Absolutely, 100%. Every church has more than what is required to set up its own economy. We don't have to use government currency in order to settle differences in trade and labor. We can literally use alternative currencies, gold, silver, Bitcoin, whatever. Money is whatever two people say it is. So we can get out of the system as much as possible. We're in the world, but we shouldn't be of the world. And this film, was it filmed mostly in Manitoba? Did you go outside? Yes, I did. I filmed it all over southern Manitoba. Uh, the opening sequence is filmed in the International Peace Garden, and there are some very important objects there which tie the whole film together. The opening three and a half minutes took 55 hours to film. Whoa, is that normal? <laughs> it is when you have to drive three and a half hours wrong, one way just to scout the location and then bring the actors there, and then one scene didn't work out, so you have to reshoot the scene, and welcome to Filmmaking 101. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then this really, truly is a project of love. Absolutely. I'm not doing it for the money. I do have $25,000 invested in this film, and maybe I'll break even. But again, people have been so generous from around the world. I'd say people have given me about a third of that figure already, and the film hasn't even been released. Wow. That's awesome. So you can see even though it is money, but people are supporting you and this documentary. Absolutely. Um, you know, God has lined up so many people, just exactly what I needed and who I needed when I needed them. Um, a, a composer from New York, a financial backer from Dubai, a webmaster from Los Angeles, and you can't write this, and yet there it is. What? What have you learned from making this project? Because this is not your first documentary. No, it isn't. I've learned two things. Number one, evil is organized. Even Christians can be succumbed into following evil, even though they think they're doing good, because Satan is that slick. And evil is only fulfilling Bible prophecy. So that is what gives me real hope. Okay. Well, Thank you for talking to me. I really appreciate you sharing what your documentary is about. And you said Friday, Saturday, and Sunday it's showing at the festival? That's right. Uh, this Thursday we have a film festival version, a, a very short version of Volume 1. That is almost required to understand volumes, Volume 2. And the second film is being shown this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday check winnipegfilmfestival.com for more details. Great. Thank you. Thank you.